Hello friends. So this is our second lecture on the of parents and children. Our fourth essay we have already done as I told you of studies of truth and also of revenge. Now the summary or an overview of the essay we had yesterday. Today we will see first point that is pressures and pains of family life or having children. So the joys of parents are secret. A secret joy that means something that you cannot express. But at the same time, it uh, it is there in your mind. It is throbbing. Certain things you cannot express. Language cannot express. It's a great joy, for example, you cannot. And, and, and great sorrow also, you cannot express in words. So the same way, the joys of parents are secret, and so are their griefs, sorrows and fears. <coughs> See, for example, when children are, when you have children, especially these days, these parents develop anxiety neurosis. Because from admission to LKG, the trouble begins. Anxiety, whether I will get admission. And uh, very, uh, you must, uh, the most cruel thing, the most unkindest cut is that these children are, have to uh, take entrance examination even for getting an admission into LKG. You can almost imagine, the children may not feel the burden, but the parents will feel the burden. Parents will feel the burden. Understand that, isn't it? And then you have got all the problems. So what will happen? Should I get, a, a, should I get an admission in the school? What will be uh, the addictions of this, my children? Will they be addicted to mobile? Will they be addicted to all kind of negatives. Will he or she fulfill my dream? So this cannot, you cannot express it. This is always in their heart. Understand? At the same thing, joy source. Have great happiness. If you, if you want to know how happy a parent is with children, you have to look at those parents, so those people, married people who have no children. Only then you will understand the the great joy or the great happiness that parents who have children they experience. And at the same time, you cannot just express it. You cannot write an essay on this. It is there throughout. So throughout your life, you have joys as well as you have anxieties. See, think of uh, uh, Kundi Devi's joys and anxieties. Kundi Devi, you know, of uh, the uh, wife of King Pandu isn't it? and the Pandavas. So how much, how great joy it would have been that she might have been experiencing and, and then what about the cares and the anxiety that she was undergoing throughout their life. See that the fight between the brothers, the cousins and all those things. You know, you cannot express that but you have always within your mind throbbing and also it is you are you live with it so to say that's what he says the joys of parents are secret and so are the griefs and fears understand yes take any example so anybody's example your example my example everybody we have this those who are children they cannot utter the one utter means express to utter something means to express, to say this. Utterance means saying. Utterance, a word is an utterance. So they cannot utter this one, nor will not utter the other. What is utter means give expression to that. You cannot give expression to the joys. You, you also cannot give expression to this. In concrete words, your griefs and your fears. Because it is always there with you. You live with it. You live with the joy. You live with the 
Uh, you live with the cares and also the fears and the griefs. Griefs the sorrows and so on. Understand? Children sweeten labors, but they make misfortunes more bitter. True. See, you are very tired coming back from your home. You see your baby smiling, a sweet smile. Then you lift him or her. And then you uh, exchange your feelings or uh, you try to respond to the, the smile that he, shower, he or she showers upon you. It's a great joy. Sweeten labors. Isn't it? Sweeten. See the word used there. It's sweeten. Just as you sweeten coffee with sugar. Your life is sweetened every moment of your life. Thinking of, thinking of uh, your children, uh, the, thinking of the, the way they behave, see? Uh, the, their uh, mischiefs. These things sweeten your labors. Labors mean life is full of labors. You have to, you know, the curse upon Adam after he <coughs> Committed the first sin, you can say, or after eating that fruit, forbidden fruit, God uh, blessed him. So that is putting things in a positive way that you should uh, earn your bread through the sweat, by the sweat of your forehead. So the labor. So you have to do labor for living. Okay, that's all I did. Work hard. But when you are working very hard, when you are tired, even the thought of your children, see how they are in the school, what they will be, uh, in what way they will be progressing, and all those things, you know, that you will sweeten your labors. But they make misfortunes more bitter. Suppose in a flat situation, you have got suppose three or four children, what will you do? You have to carry them with you. Or a famine. Then if you are alone, somehow you can e even eat some uh, something that normally you don't eat. See, but on the other hand, if you have got children, what you have to do, you have to find food for them, that is, uh, food, uh, good food for them, and so on. But otherwise, what I can, whatever you get, you can eat. So that's just an example. How make misfortunes much uh, bitter? And, uh, suppose you all of a sudden you become, see, I don't know whether you have seen that film, Vakt, this is a famous film, Vakt. So in the beginning they are very rich people and the children they are all very happy, leading a very luxurious life. But suddenly misfortune falls on that uh, the, the, uh, their father and so what happened is that he could not suffer this. The sufferings of his children he could not just hold in his mind. So what happened? He leaves, he deserts them, and he runs away from his home. Unable to suffer, unable to see the grief, unable to see them, witness the misfortunes of his children, he one day leaves the home and he, in, in, other, way, in, in other ways, he abandons them. It's not in a, because, it's in a, because he doesn't like them, but he cannot simply suffer or he cannot hold in his heart the sufferings and the misfortunes of his children. So that is that film. Or you can see there is some people what happens, you know, you, you, you hear these days, you know, you come across the stories of parents committing suicide along with the children. One of the reasons I think is this, that when they there is problem at home, they have no money, they cannot live a decent life, they cannot give parents, they cannot uh, give a decent life and uh, provide the needs of their children, what happens is that they decide to commit suicide. It's a kind of honor suicide. Committing suicide for the sake of honor of the family. See, that is what I said, misfortunes make bitter. Suppose you are all alone. Misfortune falls on you. What of that? You go. You go and start walking from your place. Go to Badrinath or go to some uh, faraway place. 
and sit there and meditate or do whatever you like. Whatever you can beg, go around begging. You cannot go around begging with the children. So you can go around begging, you can you can become a, a mendicant or you can become a, just, uh, just, just uh, without any aim you start walking. Anywhere you go. Let anything happen. You don't care. Understand? So but on the other hand, suppose you have children, you are worried about them, what to what to give them, what, how to feed them, how to make them happy, how to how how can I suffer these misfortunes alone by myself without them knowing it? All these things are problems. Understand? You are alone, you can swim across the river. Suppose you have got uh, three or four children with you, it will be very difficult for you. So this is, this is what is meant by saying that they cannot, sorry, children sweeten labors, agree, but they make misfortunes more bitter. If you are hungry, you are alone, doesn't matter. Two or three days, you will just sit there and somebody will, if somebody gives something, you will eat, otherwise you will go to sleep. You will starve, that's all. But suppose you have children crying for food, what will you do? What a terrible situation is that? Your children are sitting at home and then crying for ah, Papa, 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 give us something to eat. So you have pain, that's what I said, the pain, you cannot utter it, you cannot express it, but it will be always uh, troubling you. Isn't it? That's your misfortunes, much bitter. They increase the cares of life, but they mitigate the remembrance of death. They mean children. Already I have given you examples. Children increase the cares of life. Suppose you have only you you have an income of thousand rupees per month. You are all alone. Somehow you can manage it. Suppose you have a family, wife and three children, or two children, or just one child. You have to look after them, care for them. So, it increases the cares of life. You have to find food for them. You have to find shelter, basic needs. So, you have to send them to school. So, it increases the cares of your life. But they mitigate the remembrance of that. But when you look at them, you will think that, oh, after me, after me, these people will leave. So, that means there will be some, some, something to follow me. You will think like that. Not an empty, uh, not, not emptiness, but your children will follow you. All your children will leave after you. That thought will mitigate, means lessen, to make less, reduce, reduce the thought of death. You will think like, you will think like that, no? Ah, even if I die, it doesn't matter, because my children will, uh, the, my children will inherit my property. I be the same case with the rich people also. Suppose you are extremely very rich, exorbitantly rich, then you will always be worried what will happen to me after my death, if you are alone. See, if you are a bachelor, a chronic bachelor, you are not married, you have no children, no wife, nothing of that sort, but you have got plenty of money, what will you do with that? You are worried, my relatives will come and attack me. <laughs> but on the other hand, if you have got say, say Three or four children, you will think like that, oh, after my, after my death, what is there? These people will inherit and they will continue my name. That's the thing. They will continue with my name. My name will be, my name will last here on earth even after my death. This feeling of, you know, uh, mortality, uh, conscious, conscious of uh, death, consciousness of death, that one day I will die. I won't be here. My life will be terminated. This world will have no use, uh, no relevance for me, etc. It's a very sad part. But when you have children, you look at them, one after another, two, one or two or three, you will see that ah, they are growing up very good. So after me, my name will live in them. That is mitigating or reducing the, the remembrance of death. They increase the cares of life. But they mitigate the remembrance of death. Cares of all the possible cares of life will be increased when you have got children. And if you don't have enough money. If you have enough money, it's alright. If you don't have, 
That's the problem. Understand? And then he says, continues, the perpetuity by generation is common to beasts, animals. In animals, they want their name to live after or their genetic pool to continue in this earth even after their death. Even animals, the beasts. So the perpetuity means lasting. So lasting after death, living after death. The perpetuity by generation, that is possible only by by your 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 race can be perpetuated only by your children. Even Shakespeare has in his sonnets he said, uh, "This marble will uh, disappear, names of kings will disappear, but this my words will will be remembered even if the world disappears." So that is the meaning. There's a sonnet like this. Exactly, I don't remember that. That's what I said. So he said, uh, marble or the tombs of princes will disappear. But my sonnets will continue to live in the minds of men. So that is the desire to perpetuate your name. See, one of the basic desires is that. Recognition is a basic desire. So also, yeah, to, to make your name immortal, your life immortal, a fight against mortality. This can be won only through your children. You got the point? That's what it is. The perpetuity by generation is common to bees. Even animals, they want this. But memory, after your death, you can see, in a but a normally, a, a, a family that leads a normal life, if you go there, you will see on the walls the photo, the pictures of their parents, see, and then you are under those. That's the memory. Memory and merit. Merit means qualities. The qualities. In one of his essays, Bertrand Russell praises Rose Kennedy. The mother of John Kennedy, Robert Kennedy, Edward Kennedy as well. So she should be proud of the fact that she brought to this world such great men. So that is merit. Understand? Merit. Just now I told you about Kundi Devi. Kundi Devi would have been very proud of her, 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 her sons. So that, because merit in them. Arjun, for example. See, the greatest of arches, that is uh, merit and noble works, Yudhishthir, noble works, so it is Arjun, Bhim, so there are people who did noble works or good works or they made contributions to this world. Newton's mother would have been extremely happy, isn't it? My clients, relatives and family members, they are extremely happy because of the noble work done by him. Shakespeare's parents, or his wife and his children must be extremely happy, proud of Shakespeare, isn't it? Because of the noble work he did. So I like that Father Damien or you can see uh, Abraham Lincoln. Uh, Mahatma Gandhi, so all these great people, because they had done, they had made lasting contributions to this world. So, mm, there is no doubt that their parents were proud of them. So the perpetuity by generation is common to bees, but memory, bees will not, bees will not keep in their memory, their parents, who their father, mother, and so on. And plus, memory of memory of your father and mother, or your great grandfather and grandmother, or forefathers, that will be kept alive through the children. Then merit, that means the great qualities of your children. 
you, your qualities will continue to live in your children. So 90% of the cases, 10% of the cases we can say because of the uh, genetic the changes that might take place in the genetic code. Otherwise, the marriage, you can see, great actors, their sons and daughters, they are also actors. So, the great singers, they are the children also, you can see, you will find them, they are great singers. Isn't it? Those people, uh, great sportsmen, every 90% uh, of the cases you will find, they inherit the qualities of their great parents. Understand? Yes. So memory, merit and noble works. Noble works means the great works or the great contributions given by or, or made by these great people to the human race as such. Great scientists for example, great artists, great actors, great philosophers, all these people, what do they do? They, so what happens is that they are proper to men. So this they want to continue or you can say generations is per perpetuate their generations, even bees have that desire. But as far as humans are concerned, the memory of those people, the great qualities of those people, the great and noble works of those people will uh, remain in this world, will be remembered by generations of people through their children. So there you have, so the first sentence you can see, the joys of parents uh, are secret, and so are the griefs and the fears. Understand? The griefs, then the, when you are in trouble, your trouble will increase. When you are suffering from misfortunes, your misfortunes will increase. It will be more bitter, he says. See? Suppose in a, in a war situation, or any, then you have got mass migrations, what will you do if you have got children and you have uh, say, uh, small kids and so on, you have to carry them along. So it increases your misfortune. I think now that is clear. So it's a balanced statement. The joys of parents are secret and so are the griefs and fears. The greatest of all joys that you find is your memory will be kept alive, your merits will be kept alive, and your noble works will be remembered even after your death. So it is a sure, it is a, a, it is a sure guarantee for your immortality in this world. Guarantee for immortality. Uh, you will live through their children, your children. Understand? So that is the great pressure and at the same time as we have seen the pains also when you are suffering from misfortune and there is a natural calamity when there is a catastrophe when there is a situation like war when you have got mass migrations from one place to another when you have got earthquake when you have got floods all these things what will happen you have to look after them also therefore naturally what will happen your cares and worries will but as we have seen, this is like the two sides of a coin. You cannot have a coin with just one side. You should have two sides. Exactly like that. When you have children, you, you will have great pleasures. Pleasures which you cannot utter. Pleasures you cannot give expression in words. You it is there with you and you enjoy it through and through. Every inch of your life, every drop of your blood. But at the same day, pain and the pain and misfortunes. It will increase your griefs and problems will be doubled. Or uh, <laughs> doubled or more against. Uh, I think that what I have been I telling you so far, you have understood. So pressures, the first point today we discussed, the pressures and pains of having children. Okay? We continue with that till we meet again. Bye. Have a nice day. Enjoy your life. Enjoy reading this essay also. Bye.